Thank you, Kelly. Uh, I'm John Boyd. I, I'm a librarian here at, at Appalachian State, and I want to introduce you to Statista. Um, this is a relatively new database that the library uh, started subscribing to actually sometime last year. Um, and sometimes the challenge of getting a new database is letting students and faculty and staff know that we have it. So thank you for joining uh, me this afternoon. And I just want to give you a brief description of Statista, and then I'm going to show you um, how it works and what sort of uh, features it does have. Statista is a statistics portal that integrates data on over 60,000 topics from over 18,000 sources onto a single platform. And you can see up there, they now say 80,000 topics. So it's, it's uh, increased by 20,000 over the past month. Included are ready-made statistical charts, graphs, tables on marketing, demographics, communication, technology, politics, health, leisure, and public opinion polls. About 20% of the data in Statista comes from international organizations like the UN and the International Monetary Fund, and from government sources like the U.S. Census. The rest comes from industry, marketing, and trade groups. The tables, charts, and graphs can be downloaded as images or PDF files or into PowerPoint and Excel. And so here is the um, homepage for Statista, and I want to show you how to access it from the library website. If you are on campus and you went to www.statista.com, it would know you're on the ASU campus and you'd be fine. But I want to show you from the library's homepage. So let me go here, and under Find Information, there's a link to all article databases. And you can either go by name under the S's and also by type under statistics and data. And I'm going to go there just to point out that we have a lot of other statistical, statistic resources. Many of them are open access, available to everyone. A few others are um, by prescription only. So if I scroll all the way down alphabetical order, you'll see Statista right there. Uh, this is a homepage of Statista, uh, which changed about two weeks ago. It's not a whole lot different. And, and you can see they have various categories here on the search box, statistic, topic, studies, forecast and studies, and digital markets. So you can either search from this search box right here at the bottom or up at the top. Either one, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a search here on voting and this is the main screen that you're going to see most of the time when you're searching in Statista. And so you'll see my results right here. Um, statistics, um, there's a total of 396 items that came up, and they're divided over here on the left into these categories. 358 statistics, and then you see forecasts, or not any, but there's some for studies dossier and industry ports, topics, and infographics. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll down here. And you can just see the variety of statistics that are coming up. Uh, since this is a presidential election year, um, I just wanted to see what sort of things were related to voting. So I'm going to bring up here uh, one of the category, likelihood of millennials voting in the U.S., presidential election for 2016. And so we have 47% will definitely vote. And so we have this particular chart right here. And I'm able to download as a graphic, an Excel, PowerPoint, or as a PDF. And I also have the option of changing the settings for this uh, information. And I do that under options. I go to settings and chart type. So I can do a line graph and I can also do a table. And then you're going to see the various ways that um, formats I could download this into. I can also share this, tweet it, Facebook it, go to Google or to LinkedIn. And then it's going, if you scroll down, it's just going to give you a brief description of what this chart 
or table or line graph is showing right here. And then back to the left side, it's going to show, tell me where this information is coming from. And at this particular uh, table, and let me bring up, I actually like the table chart type the best. It'll give me the release and it'll tell me where it's coming from uh, and was published by the Harvard Institute of Politics. And there's gonna be a source link right there that will take me to the document where that information um, came from. And then you can see this was a survey of young Americans' attitudes toward politics and public service from June to July of 2016. So that is where that particular table is coming from. And I'm also gonna have the ability to cite it right here in a proper citation format. And then as I scroll down, you're going to see other um, statistical sources of information related to millennials or young voters right here. And if I keep, keep scrolling down, you're going to have other things related to millennials that may not have anything to do with voting, but they're focusing on a, a particular age category. And so every time you do a search, you get results, you're going to see links to related data on your search terms. And let me scroll back up. And if you have any um, questions as I go through this, just let me know. Also at the top here, you're going to see these uh, pull down menu options. And so there's information on what each of these categories are, the different types of information, industry reports, dossiers, uh, where they're getting statistics. Um, and then if I scroll across, you see all it's broken down by industry. And this is just a sample of industry. And then you can go to all industry. It also are giving me industry reports and industry forecast and dossiers. Dossiers are just, um, they give you good background information about, about a variety of topics. And then there's a topics category. And once again, these are just not all of the topics, um, but some of the um, most popular topics. And so I'm going to show you one here for um, one of my favorite things, coffee. Love to drink it. I'm just going to show you coffee market. And so when you click on that, you get three or four um, paragraphs, statistics and facts on the coffee market in the U.S. And then you get this Statista dossier. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you that. And so it brings up and it'll give you the option of saving it as a PowerPoint or as a PDF. And here is the table of con contents to let you know what is in this particular dossier, coffee consumption on a global level, on a US level, preparation, and then consumer behavior. So let me go ahead and take a look at that. And so I'm gonna open up this PDF file. And Statista, the company itself, um, puts together these dossiers. And this information is coming, once again, from a variety of sources. It could be from government um, statistics. It could be com coming from trade and industry groups. And this is a table of contents. And let me scroll down here. And so once again, it's taken a lot of the data that you would find in individual um, tables or charts and putting it together for you in this dossier. So you just get this collection of different topics and the charts that go with them. So individually, these would be available within the Statista data database, but here they put them together in this one PDF file that you can download and then use. As you can see, and then it goes into all sorts of things, sales growth, vendor, who are the leading vendors, vendors of coffee in the U.S., ground coffee, the Folger Coffee Company, market share, and so forth. And I'm going to go back to my Statista page. 
And so that was an example of under topics going to coffee markets. And then they also have digital markets. And um, sometimes, I mean, this is becoming more and more common and more and more um, popular for students to look at digital markets. So they have a lot of different e-commerce information here. Once again, coming from a wide variety of sources. And so what I'm going to do is go down here and do a video on demand. And so right here, new um, this download all relevant market data, and it gives you some of the highlights right here. And then if you scroll down, it's going to give you some variety of charts for this particular topic. And let me go back for that. And also the last category at the top is a category called infographics. It's just a, a, a more visual way to supply, uh, supply information. And they do a infographic of the day. So each day they're doing a new infographic. And so I'm gonna go over here to recent infographics and there's a link to all infographics. And since we just had the presidential uh, debate yesterday, uh, the, one of their gra infographics of the day was voters still distrust both presidential candidates. <laughs> and this was just released um, by Stista today. And then there's a HTML code right here that I'm highlighting that you can embed that on a web page and a blog. Um, all of this information is uh, free to use. Um, they just, the company Statista wants you to give them credit saying, I, you know, this data, this chart, this table came from Statista. And I'll, I'll show you um, where you can get more help information that also talks about downloading and using the data that's in Statista. And all over here as well, there's a URL for this infographic that you could just link to it or you can embed that in a PowerPoint on a website. And I just wanna scroll down here and give you a sense of some of the infographics. Twitter still use flying high, still isn't flying high. And gives you some information on Twitter and a brief description right here ab about what this chart is showing. And then anytime you bring up an infographic, it's going to give you related information. You may be also interested in global social networks, Facebook, fan pages, and so forth. And right here, it's giving you who may use the chart of the day. And that tells you here that uh, you're free to use this information. And let me scroll back here. So some of these charts are somewhat uh, more imaginative than others, um, but infographic is just another nice way uh, to show and uh, information. And you're also, it, this database is not focused on the United States. You're gonna have information coming from other countries. You're not gonna get information on all the countries. It's um, primarily developed countries um, is where most of this data is coming from. Uh, the company itself is based in Germany. So you're going to get a lot of data that's coming from the European, uh, the Europe continent, the European Union. Okay, so let's go back here. And to go back to the opening page here, you can just go to the Statista logo at the top, or you're always going on every page, you're going to have the search box here at the top. So I'm, I'm right now just gonna go back to the Statista logo to get back to the opening screen. And I wanna do another search for you, and I'll go ahead and do it in the main search box here, and I'm gonna do health insurance. And so once again, um, when I typed that in, I was actually in the category of topics. But you can see you're gonna get the results for statistics, forecasts, digital markets, studies, and so forth. So I just wanna look a few of these um, here. But I also wanna show you that when you do a search, it always brings the results up by relevance. 
And you're going to see um, you can also bring it up by data publication and popularity. And then you have this search accuracy normal. And there's a little bit of information about what this is about. So you see why normal and high. The default is normal. And that's the description of what Statista is talking about. So I found that if you use wide for any type of search or you, you refresh your results and you change that to wide, you really bring up a lot of things that are totally unrelated to what you're searching for. So it really is capturing a wide net when you use wide. So I find normal uh, is the best way to go, the default setting. But if you really want to focus in on the keywords that you've typed in, high is a good way to just see what sort of things come up when you have the settings to high. And the other thing you're going to notice is when you do a search, you're going to get information coming from other countries. But if you wanted to focus just on the United States, there is an option under location focus, and I could change that to the United States. So when I'm doing a search, it's going to exclude information that's coming from uh, the rest of the world, basically. Um, so that's up to you and how you want to filter your results. And then the other thing you can do over on the left are more fil filters here by publication date, uh, by category, and that's particularly if you're uh, interested in, in um, particular industry categories. Um, I generally find it's most useful for regions. So if you do a search and you find you're getting a lot of information that's coming from elsewhere, this is another way to limit to say North America or to limit to other regions of the world. So right now, these are the eight results that were coming up under topics. So I just want to show you um, a little, just give you a, a brief um, overview. And this is a dossier about Medicaid. And once again, it's going to include the information that you see right here in this overview. These generally are anywhere, anywhere from 10, 15 pages up to 60 or 70 pages. And then if I go back, uh, those are some, some of the different topics related to my health insurance uh, query. You can also limit to forecast. And I have here forecast revenue, direct life health and medical insurance carriers, looking at US 2009 to 220. I can look at studies. And so the first one that's coming up is a study looking at the Obama health care insurance exchanges. And so let me just uh, open up a study for you right here. And once again, every time you bring up something, you're going to see other recommended related studies, statistics on your particular topic. So let me show you this report. And right here, the new ACA health insurance exchanges. And it just goes through giving you a lot of information. Once again, generally in this kind of format, tables, charts, and so forth. And so this is coming from Breakaway Policy, a joint venture with Inventive Health. So this is an organization that put together this particular um, study on the health exchanges. Okay, so let's go back to this screen here and there's dossiers and industry reports. So it's looking at other countries. UK, Canada, Ireland, and so forth. And then there were three infographics related to my original search on health insurance. So when you do statistics, this is usually the time I'm getting over a thousand results related to um, health insurance. So this is maybe where I do high and I, I can refresh that. Or I could go over here to categories, uh, I mean regions, the one I really want to use here, and I can limit that to say North America, and I can refresh my search. I got below a thousand, so I still have a lot, 19, 
995. And once again, U.S. Americans with health insurance, 1990 to 2015. And I'm still going to get um, all of the same. Every, every uh, bit of statistical data is going to give you those options for how you want to present that information, table format, line graph, or tables, bar chart, I meant. And once again, it's going to give me the source. This is coming from the U.S. Census Bureau, and it's going to give me a link to the original source, and this is coming from uh, this document right here. And if I click on that, so this is from the current population reports, which is within the Census Bureau. So this is health insurance coverage in the U.S. 2015. Okay, so let's close that. And I see there's a question in there. Um, are there many education statistics? There are, and I'm just going to go back up here and do higher education. I really recommend that you do, you start out with your searches really broad for the most part, because too specific, I find that the, the search query is not really sophisticated. So what I would do is do a search for say, like Holly, higher education, see what type of results are coming up, see how many results you get. And then, you know, you can limit by these categories or some of these other limit uh, options you have. So you can see some of the things that, <clears throat> the first things that are coming up are topics, higher education graduation rates, and then it gets into the statistics here with these that will bring up the little, the chart. So let's look at this first one. And once again, this is a dossier. And so it's giving you information related to higher education and graduation rates in the US. And I'll bring up that study. So it's a 70 page collection of data relate, related to this specific topic. So it has the different degrees and then it breaks those down. Okay, so if you have uh, other questions, just uh, continue asking them. So once again, just doing higher education, that search brought up over a thousand results, but it also brought up these topics in these studies as well. And I'll just look at the studies here real quick. Things like the state of higher education workforce, education pays, brand perceptions in higher education and so forth. And your, each of these uh, results are also have tags. And so over here on the left, more statistics about higher education spending, higher education policy, insurance qualification and so forth. Okay, so let's go back to my results here. Okay, and if I wanted to see what infographics were available in higher education, a lot of times they, they're not a whole lot different than some of the tables, but they do have a little bit more um, visual appeal, I guess I should say. Where do people fail to obtain high school qualification? And this is looking at 25 to 34 year olds worldwide. And once again, there's always going to be an option to download the chart, there's gonna be an an option to link to the chart or to embed the chart. And also a brief description describing what the chart is about. Okay. And I'm gonna uh, switch gears here and I'm gonna go to industry uh, real quick and I'm gonna go to transportation and logistics. And so it just gives a brief description of what this category is about, has links to a variety of things from bicycles to motorcycles to road, ship transport. But I want to search in this category. So I'm going to look for the automobile industry. And I want to do the United States here. So I just went to my location focus to the US. I'm going to refresh. And now you can see um, 
just a wide bit of information. So, you know, I can generally limit my, uh, my search by going over here, maybe by date, or I could look at some of these other, what are some of the topics that they're focused on here? What I'm going to do is bring up um, the number of employees in this chart, because I also want to show you what they do when you download a PowerPoint, because I've, I've been showing you PDF files. So I'm going to download this as a PowerPoint. So the number of employees in the U.S. automobile dealer industry from 2004 to 2015. And what it's doing is just giving you the same chart, but giving you in multiple formats. So you can kind of, it does this for every um, ch uh, table um, chart that you bring up. It'll give you the different ways they display it. And then you can just copy that and paste and it, take that slide and then put it in your PowerPoint presentation. And then once again, this is a source. It's coming from the Bureau of Labor Statistics when, that, when it was published. And there's a URL for this particular uh, chart on dealer industry or the number of employees in the U.S. automobile dealer industry. So these are all the same chart, the, the same bit of information just presented in different ways. So every time you do a PowerPoint, that's what you get. Okay, let's minimize that. And let's go back to digital, digital markets here real quick. I just want to show you some of the things. So when you choose the topics, it's always going to give you um, a lot of options here as far as what's going to be included in that uh, category or that topic. So trend, insights, top players. You can download all the data here, an Excel spreadsheet, a PDF file. And then just goes through and talks about a variety of things that are included in this. So a wealth of information uh, anytime you go into a particular category. And then you can search within that social media category if you choose to. Okay, uh, there are a couple things I need to point out to you that because our uh, subscription of this is a campus-wide subscription, there are a couple of features we do not have, um, and the only way to have them, even though we have a premium, an account with Statista, you're going to see Add to Collection right over here on the left. You, that is something that's only available if you had an individual subscription. So you would have your own profile, your own account, because when you go over here, you're going to see my account. That is actually the account that the library subscribes to this particular product. So there is no way to set up your own account that's for individual subscribers to this uh, database. And the other option that is not available is research alerts. So um, if you wanted each weekly or as new uh, information uh, is released by Statista, say, on social media, they would inform you of those updates. That is also not available. So, um, when you click on that, it will do nothing. When you add to the collection, it will also do nothing. So. Those are for individual accounts, and they are not available for our campus-wide site license for this. But I, I don't think that's too much of a drawback. Um, you don't want to be bombarded with more email anyway. Um, but I would like, you know, it would be great if you could um, add, you know, have a profile and add things to your collection. But they give you so many ways to get access to that uh, through embedding, through the direct link, through saving uh, in, a, in a variety of formats. So um, there's really no problem getting access to all this data. And 